Hello and welcome to the Week Ahead video uh, with me, David Madden. Today's date is Thursday, the 25th of October 2018, and the time has just gone 17.40 British Summer Time. But we're looking ahead uh, to Monday, the 29th of October, until Friday, the 2nd of November. Um, next week, uh, the main focus is going to be on the UK and the US. On Monday, we have the UK budget. Uh, it's going to be big news from a political point of view, but it may not be that big of a deal from the financial markets. Uh, it does seem strange, though, uh, that the UK, UK government is pressing ahead with a budget, even though um, there's, there's been no, no kind of deals being struck in relation to Brexit. So any future deals of Brexit may require some tweaking to the announcement that we're going to hear about next week. On Thursday, we have an update from the Bank of England. No change is expected in terms of monetary policy. We also hear from the bank. We also hear from the. We also hear the inflation report, and that, that's potentially going to be the more important of the two uh, updates on that particular day. Uh, there's been a recent decline in the British pound, which may cause, which may prompt the Bank of England to actually raise its inflation forecast. And if you do have an inflation, uh, if the inflation forecast is raised, it may, it may suggest. The Bank of England are going to tighten uh, monetary policy sooner than initially thought, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, and on Friday, it is the first Friday of the month, so that means it's US non-farm payrolls. Um, bearing in mind the September figure wasn't wasn't too great, only 134,000 jobs were added, but we could have a, a revision to that number given that uh, the hurricane over in the US caused some disruption, so it, it's possible, possible it's, it's, it's certainly possible that we could see a upward revision to that number. It's also worth remembering that, that the average earnings in the US last month actually slipped back to 2.8% from 2.9%. And once again, earnings are actually probably one of the more important components of the uh, jobs report. Uh, when Americans are earning more money, they, they tend to go out and spend more money. Uh, taking a look at some of the major markets which could be impacted, starting off with the pound versus the US dollar. Uh, the pound lost a fair bit of ground first the US dollar between April and August, and since then it's been it, it, since mid August it was it was staging a fairly decent comeback, but notice how the high of October failed to take out the high of September, and notice how the recent low here um, managed to take out the, the recent low in, in early October. So, and we are below the kind of 130 level, which is a kind of a big psychological number. So. While we remain south of the 130 mark, it's likely that we could see further losses in the pound versus the US dollar. And if you do drift, drift lower from here, uh, we could look at heading back down towards this area here, which comes into play at one spot 27.85, or perhaps even down as the low as the August low of one spot 26.61. Uh, any moves to the upside could run to resistance at 130, and a move beyond 130 could then bring the 132.50 area into play. Taking a look now at the euro sterling. So broadly speaking, uh, euro sterling has, has been in decline uh, between August and early October, but we have seen a decent enough uh, bounce back uh, since then. Uh, we're now back above the 30 moving average, uh, which comes into play at, at zero spot 88.35. And if we hold above that level, we could look, we could look to push on higher from here. And if you do take out this yellow line here, the 100 day moving average, which comes into play at 0 spot, 80, 0 spot 88, 81, we could be looking at any back up towards 0 spot 89. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at any up towards the 0 spot 90 region. Uh, if the, the wider trend, which has been in play for a number of, uh, number of months now, does manage to continue and the market turns over on itself again, we could be looking at any back down towards 0 spot 88, and a move below that may, may, might bring 0 spot um, zero spot 87.25 into play. Taking a look now at the FTSE 100. Uh, just to uh, remind you again, this video has been recorded on Thursday, the 25th of October, and the time has just gone uh, 17.40 British summer time. So some of the prices may or may not, may or may, may or, some of the markets may have moved between now and this video going live. Um, if you take a look at the FTSE 100, it's been in a fairly solid, uh, aggressive downward trend uh, in, in, in recent weeks and even months. Uh, so the pressure is very much to the downside. Uh, but we are near a, a very important metric. Uh, I'm looking here at the weekly chart. I'm looking here at this red line here, the 200-week moving average. And we can see here the 200-week moving average provided both de decent resistance and support uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, we're not too far away from at the moment. At, at the moment, the 200-week moving average comes into play at 69.56, uh, and, and the current level on the FTSE is 
6,987. So we're not too far away from it for the time being. If we were to if we were to break below that, that would be uh, quite a a bear a signal, and we could see further losses. Taking a look at the uh, on the daily chart, if we do manage to uh, push on lower from here, we could look at retesting the uh, the March low at 6839, uh, and if we go a bit below that, we could look heading back down towards the December. Uh, there's this low here in December 2016, uh, which comes to play at 66.78. Uh, any move to the upside may run, in, may run into resistance at this at uh, 7,000. And beyond 7,000, we could be looking heading up, up towards 7,144. Sorry, apologies. 7,114, this area here. And if we headed north of that, we could be looking heading back up towards the 7,250 region here. We really essentially would need to take out the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 73.34, before we have any signs of actually the market actually um, be becoming confident that the market is going to push on higher. Um, we do have a number of other uh, uh, both corporate and economic announcements next week. So on Monday, we have third quarter figures from HSBC. On Tuesday, um, we have third quarter Italian GDP. We have a third quarter uh, figures from BP, third quarter figures from Facebook. On Tuesday night, uh, we have an Apple iPod Pro and Mac event, uh, which is on the Tuesday, but we also have f fourth quarter earnings uh, from Apple on, on Thursday, the 1st of November. On Wednesday, uh, we have quite a, we have a, a, essentially a raft of manufacturing PMIs uh, from, from countries around the world. Uh, on Wednesday, we also have the Bank of Japan interest rate decision. And as I just said, on Thursday, we have the Bank of England interest rate decision and also inflation report. And as I covered at the top of the webinar, uh, we do have the uh, U.S. non-farm payrolls report on Friday. And speaking of U.S. non-farm payrolls, U.S. non-farm payrolls, we are holding a webinar uh, for that event. Um, if you go to the uh, our website cbcmarkets.com, and if you go to the learn section, you you, you will find um, you able to sign up for uh, the webinars and events, and it's located here, uh, webinar 2nd of, 2nd of November, non from payrolls live from 13.15 British summer time. Uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we make here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.